Well, hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the Drive Her Business Brews, the podcast where we blend insightful conversations with practical advice to empower you, especially the dynamic of women and men entrepreneurs out here to drive your business and your personal lives forward. I'm your host and the manager here. And today we are embracing the spirit of renewal and rejuvenation that comes with the first day of spring, March 19th, 2024. We are in spring officially. As stewards of our homes and home-based businesses, it's essential to not just manage, but truly optimize our spaces and resources. That's why today's episode is titled Spring Into Action, Decluttering Your Documents for Home, and business. We're diving deep into the art of necessity of organizing, decluttering, and securing your crucial documents. Because let's face it, a cluttered space can lead to a cluttered mind. And that's the last thing we need when we're driving our ventures forward. Whether you're, you know, sorting through stacks of paperwork, digital files that have gone rogue, or ensuring your most value or vital documents are safe and sound, this episode is your guide to shedding the old and making, or shredding the old, and making way for the new. So grab your favorite brew, get comfortable, and let's spring into action together, transforming our spaces well into the well-oiled machines that support our goals and aspirations. So now, to kick things off, let's talk about why decluttering is more than just a physical act. It's a mental and emotional reset that can pave the way for clarity, efficiency, and peace of mind. Whether you're tackling a home office overflowing with papers or digital files that haven't seen the light of day in years, the journey we're embarking on today, the first day of spring, is going to set the foundation for a season of growth and productivity. So welcome, you all. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for coming in. Let's go ahead and jump into it. This is, I never do evening talks like this, but I promised I was going to do the seven days of asset and armor, right? Giving you kind of working you all up to what it is that we're going to be doing on Sunday, the 24th. I encourage you all, if you can't join, that's okay. We will be selling the replay, but I promise you what you are going to get on Sunday is going to be massive. And if you look into everything that's going on right now, I am... I try to stay off of social media, but I, every time I open it, I'm just, I'm literally heartbroken. And one thing I can say is we're going to have to have our eyes dotted and our, uh, and our T's crossed. Okay. in this season, we cannot lack in anything that we're doing. And I believe spring, y'all know it's my favorite season. Spring is the time that we need to take advantage of the momentum. We need to take time of coming out of winter, right? We need to take the time because mind you, for my business owners, we're heading into Q2. And for my people that have nine to fives, understand your business is preparing for Q2. What does that look like? What does that smell like? What does that feel like? You don't want to come into this season with the weight of dust and, and dirt and, and disorganization. You don't want that. So what do we do? How do we bake, break ground, right? Let's say you haven't done, abs you've done absolutely nothing, okay? Uh, if you've been rocking with me, that should not be the case, but I understand life be lifing. And so what we're going to do today, I am going to go over some of the things, uh, um, particularly what we're going to be covering, some of the things that we'll even be covering when we have the class, the asset and armor class on Sunday, okay, uh, with, you know, our asset protection manager, she's coming in, which is Tiffany Lipscum. And then we're going to also, um, I'm going to have Gil of um, Graham Solutions, he's coming in and he's going to be discussing, because, you know, he buys up a lot of real estate, a lot of land, raw land, um, uh, the tax deeds and so forth and owns a number of investment uh, properties. And so you're going to understand from various dynamics on not only securing your assets, but on, but you listen, to, let me tell you something. I'm amazed. One of the things that I, and it's hard for me as a business consultant and a business coach that helps small home-based business owners, 
everybody want the money. Everybody want the limelight. Everybody want the success. Everybody want the pings. Everybody want the likes and the follows. Everybody want their stuff being bought, but no one is willing to manage themselves. Nobody want to understand, don't understand being governors, right? Being as the church will call them, governors are the elders of the church. You are called to be an elder with your, and within your rightful space. But the issue is a lot of us, if you don't know how to be led, how is it that you're going to even be able to lead yourself? And a lot of us as home-based business owners and just even having homes, being mothers, being, being husbands, right? Um, being wives, spouses, there's a degree of management and you got to know where, what, you know, what you're good in, what you're able to do, what you can master, you know, what should, what do you outsource all those different things? And I'm going to tell you right now, if you want to get good in, and this is the, the, the pot calling the kettle black. Okay. I had to learn this. Isn't that I'm naturally knowledgeable. I have the gift of wisdom. I'm, I can discern strongly. I am a, a, a massive strategist. I know how to strategize. I'm a teacher. Um, and I, and I've always been in leadership roles, but I'm going to tell you right now, all that is almost pointless and, and meaningless. If you don't have management, if you are not structured, see, it's nothing like I was on the phone with the bank today and, um, I'm getting some things cleared up, right? I'm making some moves. If you know what I mean, making some moves and it, I, because I've been doing this, it was amazing. Cause they, now these banks, y'all, they are not playing. They don't just ain't no, you just do something online. They getting you on the phone. They're going to be on the phone with you for about a good 30 minute. Okay. They run it. They are literally dotting I's and crossing T's. Okay. Um, one of the questions they had asked me was, Hey, do you do anything in the uh, credit realm? I was like, no. And I already knew why that question was asked. Right. They are doing deep dives. And one of the things I was able to do, whether it was digitally or physically, I was able to secure my documents when they asked. It wasn't about, oh, well, let me see, because what they're doing is I noticed because I had a friend in the IRS and she told me this is what they do. When they ask you certain questions, they're timing how long it takes you to get the get what it is that they need to them. Even if it's digitally, I was able to get the my documents, digital documents to her. Like, oh, here you go. Uh, what's the, the um? Do you have this and do you have that? Oh, yeah, I already have the printout. Here you go. They're timing that, and there is something about that diligence and that sharpness that is amazing, right? And it will set you apart from most. I talk to so many people. I have people, and I'm gonna tell you. Let me. And going forward, I, it's sad that I gotta say this disclaimer. Don't sign up for my classes and you don't read the description. I put in clear descriptions in when, you know, when you, when you sign up for a class, read that, click on that little box and read it and going forward, anything else. One thing about me, I just ordered a bunch of stuff that I've been, some of the stuff I was talking on the phone with Tiffany and we was bragging about I, my CD player finally came. I was so excited. And we was going over the things that we was, we was bragging about that we got right. And the, what we was bragging about is the fact that we, it was products that we sat on for a year, sat on for two years. I do massive research, y'all. I will watch videos. It's one of my, I guess, guilty pleasures, you say, or people say a toxic trait, but I will do that. I will research. I will make sure, in fact, this is something that I need. How would it be able to yield? How many years can I have it? But I'm amazed at how many people do not self-govern in this, in these kind of way, right? Um, you got to do this. You got to do this. I, you know, it's not anyone else's job to think for you. And unfortunately, because this, we live in a world of automation, we live in a world where we have walked away from so many aspects of using certain tangible mechanical aspects of ourselves. There's no critical thinking that I'm amazed at the, the amount of adults and, you know, that I've, I deal with that there's just no governance. And we got to get back to that. How you get back to that? Organize what you got. Y'all know me, if you've taken any of my classes, especially at my BBBS and stuff like that, what I always say, use what's in your hand. Everyone is so busy trying to reach. I was like, you know, I remember I used to think, man, if someone just gave me $25,000, I used to think that until I, in, until the first time I made $25,000 in a month myself. Okay. And you, you, you think these things are going to come externally, but you really have to learn to govern yourself internally. And when you do that spiritually, mentally, um, guarding your mind, knowing wh where your tax documents, y'all, where are your bank statements, y'all, y'all know, I did this talk a while back. I, I don't like the fact that I'm so, I was just so tethered 
it's to the point, and I'm I've been you know getting on a lot of my bill companies because I requested that you're gonna mail me my phone bill, you're gonna mail me my electric bill. They all want you to go paperless. And I can't, and I was like, there's something up with this. You got charges mysteriously on there. But when you have something on paper, they can't refute that. It's got their letterhead, their information. But guess what? That stuff needs to be organized. Your mail needs to be organized. Um, I have a bunch of stuff like from my printers, right? You want to make sure you have the manufacturing number. You want to make sure you have the serial number, the make and the model of those things, right? That needs to be written down in a structured way. You need to make sure you have a filing system for your refrigerator, right? The warranty, the deeds, the your insurance. You want hard copies of these things you are. We're coming into an hour. I'm telling you how they are about to, I can't say that word because definitely um, YouTube would take it down, but uh, I'm going to, how they going to vape? I'll say that. You, you get what I'm saying? They're going to vape. They're going to rob and they're going to pillage. And I'm telling you, and I believe this is just a word of knowledge. I'm not saying this is prophetic, but I will say it is a word of knowledge. If you don't have documentation, if you don't have a system of having information and it's not structured, y'all, let me tell you something. I have a process. I haven't talked about it, but I have a process, especially if you're an ADHD or um, I'm thinking about making it a product, but I, it was, I was running my own trial studies. One of the things that I have found to make me more productive, I don't do a to do. I don't do to do lists. To do lists. If you're ADHD or neurodivergent, you already know that doesn't work. We try it. We 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 uh we we'll try to do it, but what happens is psychologically we become overwhelmed. It's too much stimulation, right? It's a mental stimulation. If we, then, especially if you're on the spectrum of where you're gonna have to deal with the anxiety, right? So guess what I started doing? And tr I did a whole study on this. Um, Y'all, I ordered books. I've been doing this and it has worked massively. Guess what works? I have something called a have done list. I didn't even know this was an actual medical term um, that is that is used and why um, certain people like me that learn through spatial memory and all that kind of stuff. If you are creative, you would totally understand this. When I did the study on why you need to have a uh, have done list is I am I respond to the rewards. OK, I respond. Most of us, if you are uh, naturally, I would say competitive, if you're competitive, if you are entrepreneurial and you don't do good with authority all the time. Right. Um, we're the kind of people we work good by ourselves. Like when I had a job, you could leave me by myself. You could leave me with the whole division. I'm going to handle it. That was one thing about me. No matter what job I had, I knew I was the ultimate one man band, always have been. and so. When people like us or creatives, if you're a crafter, um, to do lists don't work for us. It's not going to work. We're going to we'll be ready to shoot it down or just to, we're seething at it. We see it every moment. It makes our anxiety go up. The irony is with people like us, it's not that we're lazy or that we're procrastinating. The issue is a lot of times we know what to do. OK. We know what to do. Knowing what to do and how to do is not an issue for us. If we don't know how to do something, we're getting on Google. We're getting on ChatGPT. We're getting on YouTube. We're going to watch a 20-minute video, five minutes. We know how to vet videos. We're going to go in. We're going to figure out how to do it. We're going to read the instructions. We know. If we have a litany of things to do for the day. Now, I do have a, a monthly list that's on my calendar that I write in. Those are for the macro stuff. But what about the mi micro? And so what I started doing was I detail, I've been creating like basically this diary of my life of everything that I do. And what has happened because I, my receptors, my neurotransmitters or however you want to say that, how my respect receptors um, respond, it responds by way of reward. I love the reward of finishing something. Doesn't matter what it is. This is why sometimes this is why you have to move in silence. Also, you all, when you move in silence and when you don't talk about something until after it's done, you have a higher percentage of, of executing and finishing that thing. But when you talk about a thing and you're like, that's why I don't like people who tell me what they're going to do. Them, I'm going to do's and what you're going to do. People are annoying. Why? Because that's all they do. You talk to them a year later. They talk about the same thing that they're going to do. They ain't done nothing. They would have, could have, should have. That's all they are. But people that are quiet about a thing, right, it's one thing to say it for a minute and then you go and you just go ahead and you execute. Because why? A lot of times those people are receiving the reward of actually when you say you're going to do something, right, the mind doesn't know that you've actually done. This is why people who are overly confident that shouldn't be 
has a problem because they've, they've literally been able to trick their mind. It's a, it's like a tripwire. So saying all that to say this there, we have to find a means right now. If you're a list person, you didn't do that. I'm not a list person that have done. I literally will have lists where I have 60 things that I've literally written down. And everything that I've written down, it seems like I tend to execute at a, uh, at a, at a greater degree of expectation. And the rule is when you write it down, you don't write it down when, while you're doing it or anything, you only can write it down when the task is complete. And if you're neurodivergent or ADHD, you already know what I'm talking about. We will start something and then leave it for two weeks. I have literally start just something simple of putting together a printer or putting together something and then come back to it a, a week later. You can't do that. You have to finish. Okay. So what does this mean for you? We're going to go over some of the tips of decluttering and organizing. And I'm just going to go over, cause I don't want this to be long. I'm going to go over a number of different things. And if you're in here, go ahead and hit the like button. I'm going to go over a number of different things that, um, you need to consider, right? Go ahead and organizing. Okay. And we're going to um, cover the various, you know, essential documents, including um, things for your estate planning, business operations, personal records, and more. Now, another reason why I am so excited about this is because I received the other day, and I'm going to share screen. And if you want to get this, I do have a code. Um, I do have a code where you get a discount. And I received my knock box. I got a video. I have to edit the video. Um, this is a knock box, right? Which is next of kin box. And I've been really, really wanting this. And Tiffany is the one who peeped me onto it. And um, excuse me. And she's the one that peeped me onto it. And she was like, Kim, you really need to get a, lock, a knock box, you know, because she does estate planning. Excuse me, hold on. And so I did the research. Um, if you're on TikTok, you've seen probably seen some of these. And let me tell you something. This will take care of a lot of, it, especially on the home side. You could do some things on the business side too, but on the home side, this is a phenomenal, phenomenal um, tool that will help you out. If you see the next of kin box, it says, if something were to happen to you tomorrow, would your next of kin be prepared to manage your home, possessions, online accounts, assets, finances, and wishes? They will, um, they will, if you have a not box, this is next of kin box, right? And so I want you all to go check out this company. Um, I do have a discount link cause I got an affiliate link cause y'all already know me. I'm gonna get them affiliates, but look at all these that's in here. Everything is outlined for you. It comes with the, the sheets of paper for you to fill out. And, um, I got the highest tier one, so it was worth the investment. It's fireproof. Where's the one that I got? Um, I think it's this one. Yeah, this is the one that I got. Okay. It's fireproof. It's it is very large. Okay. Um, but, 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 the, 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 did I get two? No, I only got one. Why it says two? I only got one. I forget which one it was, but I know I got it. Um, you know, shop. You can see all the different documents that they have. Um, the fireproof stuff, you know, what have you, you can put like, I have a storage unit. If anything, like when I almost died of COVID and people had to actually go in my house to take care of my dog, I was in the hospital over two weeks, y'all. So I had to, there was a lot of things. I had a business, I have a business, I have a couple of businesses that would, that really woke me up. That really woke me up in certain retrospects. So organization, you don't want, how many of you are, cause I've been in this position, but how many of you all have had people that, you know, relatives that's died or what have you, and they're not structured, nothing is organized, but they, you know, I think it's very selfish when people would, you know, you may not have all the insurance and you may not have all your documents. Um, I would say, um, organized, but you should have some things. People shouldn't have to do a fish fry and a GoFundMe and go figure out your whole life. It, it just shouldn't happen. Okay. Um, we need, we need Sicily, you should do that. You should get one of these and do the affiliate. Exactly. It, it ties in perfectly. Let me put that in that. Um, this is envision lives. Um, oh, this will work for me and my business. Absolutely. I ordered it and I became an affiliate. So any of you all that's in these spaces, if you're in insurance, if you do anything in um, 
I would say even with business, um, maybe if you're a realtor, there's see, go research this, go watch videos on this company. I think you all would love it. As mo most of my people are people of color. This is something that we need y'all. We have, come on. We got to be managers. We got to be stewards. We got to be elders. God has given us so much. And sometimes, you know, I look around and we are, even with everything going on, we are massively blessed but we don't have nothing organized. This is why, and let me tell you, this is why it's imperative with everything that these corrupt politicians, these governments and these um, corporations are doing, our, our house have to be in order. God is wanting our stuff to be in order. There's something, you wanna know something? You ever known people, they don't mess with people that got stuff in order. They'll try you. But when they know your I's are dotted and your T's are crossed, they kind of will just, you. and I'm talking about in the workspace. We've known those people in the workspace. They These are people that professionally look for people that have fault lines. But when you have documentation, when you have things that are structured, when you have things that are organized and you can present them to a judge, you can present them to a court, like how I'm doing my, um, my have done list, right? My have dones, I am literally cataloging this. So you're not going to be able to say, well, oh, she, oh, if I have to present on a day, you know, stuff that I did, I date my stuff. I, I file it. I can scan it. I can do all that. Not only have a physical file, but have a digital file because I have a feeling you all, I have a feeling that it's going to come down to this and our routine and our diligence and our, how would I, what's the other word? Our disciplines are going to have to speak for themselves. Okay. So I encourage you all to go, you could get the labels. Um, they got a kid box as well. You all look at this. You got the password box. You have a lot of different things that will help you look at this. Okay. This company is phenomenal. I really think you will enjoy it. I, 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 I look, if you're like, look, Kimberly, I ain't about to be in Canva making a whole bunch of stuff. I get it, sister. I get it. Um, there's someone that's made it for you. OK, and at least help you start the framework so that you can um, be protected. But I love the firebox. The firebox is amazing. It is amazing. So let's go ahead and get into it. OK, let's go ahead and get into it. <clears throat> uh, uh, Cicely said um, earlier today, one of my vendors said I was out of compliance with documents. I'm like, oh, no, ma'am. And the. <laughs> and forward the emails sent months ago with documents like that. Just like that. Come on. Uh, Kiana said, my granny only had a um, file box with, um, in the closet. All her children thought she was holding something, but I knew she wasn't, it wasn't organized at all. <laughs> You're like, oh no, let me tell you something. People, and, and this is something, and I say this about myself, people uh, allow chaos, enjoy chaos. Um, and when I say, a, I would say a chaotic environment, right? Even that meaning your papers, your stuff is not in line, your tax is not in line, your documents are not in line, um, your billing is not in line. People that do that kind of don't mind, how can I say? They're already disheveled. And so a lot of times, a lot of, a lot of a uh, chaotic environment allows, allows a person to hide because basically what we're doing, we are saying, I don't want to deal with this. I don't want to, I don't want to face the fact, right. Of my chaotic environment. I don't want to be accountable. This is what accounting is. I don't want to be accountable because if I'm, if I'm accountable, I'm going to see, I'm actually in this amount of debt. If I'm, a, if I'm unaccountable, I'm going to see my, my warranties actually expired. So a lot of times you all are going to get something filed, right? Let's say the refrigerator go out, but you didn't do the extended warranty or the warranty actually expired five months ago. Right. Or you think you don't need new tires, but the tires that you got are from four years ago. But if we have a routine of doing this, which we used to do, this is not hard. OK. We will we will sleep better at night. And I'm going to tell you, that's one thing about me. I sleep much better at night because I've been more structured. And it takes a while. It's, it's a lot of fasting and praying and it's a lot of, you know, reading the word. But my my favorite people are um, I think it, it was Moses. My favorite person is Joseph. Joseph was. Um, a, a prince, right? Uh, what you say, a prince of the land? What you call him? Uh, of the province. Um, he was second in command. I don't think it's called a prince, but uh, um, I cannot think of the word. 
But Joseph is one of my favorite. And I think because I like administration, because he was a great administrator, right? He was a great steward. This man knew how to govern. Okay. He was a governor in a land. So we have to learn of these people. Um, King Solomon, these are people that had really great documentation. Um, I was talking to a friend about that when I was doing a study in the Bible about just um, documentation. And I, I don't like, you know how you'll read Kings or second Chronicles or something. And it'd be like, it go on generation after generation after generation has been King such and such. And he was a good King and he ruled in such and such, such and such in Mesopotamia. And he ruled at this, you know, and he lived to 73 and 10 scores, you know, and have all, and you're like, why? Okay. Why? It's not until now I see how accountable God is. And remember the Bible in the, in the word of God, it says the books will be open everything. He said he has numbered the hair on our heads. So you mean to tell me my God is an accountant. My God is a God that steward over every head hair on our head. He knows every aspect of us physically and internally. Hmm. And I'm just supposed to act like, okay, I don't have to do this. No, one thing about the Jews, right? The real ones. All right. Um, we took an account for everything. And this is why they was always, when they, you notice every time the Jews got destroyed and decimated, what was, what would happen? They could literally go back and rebuild their city. They could literally go back and rebuild the temple. They could literally go back and rebuild their communities. Why? Because they had records. Record keeping was on point. Record keeping was a staple. You had to have scribes. And there was no tilting of it. There was no lying of it. You had to be a scribe. Certain ones, that was literally a call, right? So I'm sorry, I'm getting over. Um, um, I'm, I'm getting getting out of here. Um, <laughs> it's in, it's I don't want to get preachy. Someone said, uh, preach and then genealogy, genealogy, it mattered. It mattered you all. And we don't even know most of us. We don't even know what would great grandma do. You know, I'm in the, being in the church and coming out the deliverance ministry in my family. I always, and I tell them I had to go, I go into my mama and my dad. Now my daddy would tell everything. He, he got diarrhea of the mouth like me. Right. He ain't got, there ain't going to be no secrets and he don't believe in no secrets. Right. But my mama there it's with them. She was originally born in the South from Florida. So, and she has what, 10 siblings? It's, it's a big family. Um, so I got a lot of aunts and uncles. And, but they came from just how they was raised in the South. Everything was very secretive. And they just act like something didn't happen. Like they just act like, I'd be like, I still find out stuff in my family. I had no idea. I was like, Ma, why didn't you, like, are you serious? She's like, oh, yeah, you know. But it was like a, a old Southern woman thing. Right. And so you got to go into genealogy. You got to make sure you ain't marrying no cousins. Right. You got to make sure, you know, where family came from and all this kind of stuff. It matters. And maybe and we can be the trendsetters in the in the curse breakers by uh, being honest with our children. If granddaddy and great granddaddy and daddy was nothing more than whoremongers and they were drunkards and they went to prison, there might be a generational curse in that. We might, we might need a, we might, there's a pile of probability that your son or junior may be, be that. So what we have to do, we have to educate the next generation on is not to make fun or to, to demean our, our ancestors or whatever, but we have, they have to understand, Hey son, you may be susceptible to this because of X, Y, and Z. I'm not saying you're going to fall into that, but here's the documentation. And what we're going to do, we're going to we're going to safeguard you in a way and put, give you a life in a way that we can do everything in our power to make sure this and ensure this doesn't happen. OK, so let's go ahead and get into this. Right. Let's get into the documents. So what we're talking about with the home documents, here are some things you might want to write these down. All right. Um what Mr. King say, um, Joseph is 30 years old, verse 46, when he is promoted to be, um, being visor, vizier, I think that's how you say that. Um, the second in charge, all of Egypt. So, that's my minister right there. Y'all <laughs> that's the preacher, man. Um, something like a Martin day prime minister. That's the, yes. I, I can't say prince, a prime. That's what he was. He was a prime minister. Come on, Mr. King. Let me put that on the screen. 
Let me put that on the screen. Everyone wants to talk about his coat and many roads, but can we talk about this man was a prime minister, second in command to Pharaoh? Okay. Okay. Now, let's get into the documents, right? So home documents, all right? These are going to be your personal identifications and records, right? So this is going to be your birth certificates, your social security cards, your passports. Um, I have a passport card as well as a passport, okay? So you, you want to make sure both of those. I do carry, now I carry my passport card around with me as a, as a secondary form of ID. I have my state ID, my license, but I also have my passport card. I just, that's just something coming from out of law enforcement, and doing the kind of stuff that I do in business, it, people ask for a second form of ID. Your social security should not be it. A passport is is better than anything, okay, because of the scrutiny that it goes through. So um, you have your driver's license or ID cards, and this can be backup ones. I do have backup ones, so I have the one that I carry, but I also have a backup one that's in because you can order them online. They mail it right to you for $25 here in the state of Georgia. Um, so you want to have that marriage or divorce certificates. You want to have those right adoption papers. You want to have those. Okay. You don't want to go digging for this stuff. You want to have it blood type. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm kind of jumping ahead, but I, I, I think that should be when it comes to health and medical aspects, right? Um, we're, we're, we'll get more into that. Then we have property, um, and insurance, right? So your mortgage documents or your lease agreements, y'all, you, I've, I've done videos on this about, and literally showed you how you can upload into ChatGPT your leasing agreement. You can upload your insurance papers. If you don't understand, um, if you don't understand, uh, the lingo, no problem. You can plug it into a GPT and it'll break it down for you. All right. Um, property deeds. All right. A lot of us, what are we doing right now? We're buying up deeds. This is something that I'm making sure that is <laughs> heavily guarded and it's protected. Right. I make sure I scan it. Um, you know, I scan the deed, I scan it for my, uh, this is now, let me tell you my process. This may be a little, uh, some people say neurotic, but I don't think so. So you get, you get your deed or you get whatever it is, document, that you get, you scan it. I have two scanners. So you scan it, right? You create a digital file. Not only do I put that, um, on my, on my hard drive, right? A flash drive, but you want to email it to yourself. One thing I've learned and always title it what it is. I will email myself certain documents. Okay. Um, so I remember, so if worst case, if I'm out in the field and I got to access something and I got to send it, I don't have to wait to go home. I usually, because it happened today, I was able to go into my email. I knew exactly what to type in. The form was already in my email. I don't like putting things in Google Drive all the time, like personal stuff. But I will email myself. And then I was able to send that document. Okay? So we got um, mortgage documents and lease agree leasing agreements, right? Property deeds, um, home and auto insurance policies, home inventory for insurance purposes. I have a product that I have coming out that is, y'all going to be like, what? It is so rich, y'all. It is so good. Um, one of the things that I'm working on and I've told you all to do yourself, take an inventory of everything that you have in your, in your home. That's of value. So if you have a Canon camera, if you have printers, a lot of us are home-based business owners. So you need to take an inventory of all that stuff. And here's the good thing. You can literally write down the information. So the serial number, the model and the make, um, you can even write down the cost, um, the color, you can make your own query and guess what? Write it on down on a piece of paper. I have the remarkable tablet, so I don't have to be, fo I don't have to worry about a whole bu bunch of paper with the remarkable tablet, which, um, Tiffany said, ain't nothing more than a, a, a um, glorified etch -a sketch <laughs> And it is right. So you, you just write, you know, or you can use pen and paper, however, but it converts that immediately into a PDF. I could take that PDF, put it into without having, without having to put it in graphs or anything. I can put it in, upload it to my GPT, my GPT. If I prompt it correctly, it will qu place it in the query and organize all that data. Y'all, I'm telling y'all this. And I'm, a, I keep saying this stuff is not going to be around for a long time. Um, Cicely says, oh, I gifted my son a remarkable tablet a few years ago. He loves it. Let me tell you, it is, ain't it? It's the bomb. And I don't know if he's got the update. I just got the remarkable two. Yo, it's the updated version. It is amazing. It is absolutely amazing. 
And I, I don't like, because my iPad was just, I always got to do these updates. I was like, I'm, I'm done with this, right? I'm done with this. I never use my iPad. And I want to be untethered. This allows you to be untethered without being on your phone, being on an iPad or being on a desktop. And you can work like you're working with pen and paper. Okay. Then we have warranties manuals for the home appliances and systems. Okay. <clears throat> then we have financial records. So this is going to be your bank statements, credit card statements, loan documents, investment records, stocks, bonds, etc. Retirement account statements, tax returns, and supporting documents. Okay. All right. Then we have medical inf information, right? So this is going to be your medical insurance, your health insurance cards and policies, medical history and records. This is um, even your, like your blood type. That is very important. Y'all should have your blood type records there. Uh, prescriptions and treatment plans, live will and advance directive. Going back to, let me put this back on the stage. Okay. This will really help you in this area of having a knockbox. Okay. Of having a knockbox. Okay. Um, and I got, I'll give you all my affiliate link if you, um, if you want to get this because the discount is, it's nice. I used the discount myself and it was nice. Okay. Um, where are we at? Da, 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 da. Estate planning. Now Tiffany's going to go, she's going to go into actually a lot of this stuff, like the financial records, medical information and estate planning. Um, she's specialized in all those areas. So wills, trust power attorney y'all this is something is a uh, power of attorney is really under look you do not want if you're like this happened to my uncle my uncle was dying um he was just gravely ill my my father's brother it was like his twin and um he didn't have things in order now my father had already taken insurance out on him because he just knew because of my uncle's lifestyle at some point you know, the inevitable, unfortunately, what happened. And so he took care of him for a month, but he was in the hospital until the hospital was like, look, he's basically dead. You know, like he's not, he's alive, but if we took him off these machines, he's gone, he, he can't live on his own. And so it came to, okay, does my father take power of attorney? But if my father took power of attorney, guess what? He would incur all of his debt, medical debt. There was something with that with the hospital, right? So you want to know some of the information, um, what kind of, you know, power of attorney, medical, if it, the power of attorney is for financial, or if the um, power of attorney is for healthcare, you want to know these things. You want to make sure um, if a person, like they don't have no health insurance, they don't have, you know, certain things, you might end up inheriting their debt. You don't want that, okay? Let the, let, let the hospital write, write it off. That's all I'm gonna say, okay? <laughs> let them write it off, all right? Um, guardianship and designations, right? Funeral and bur burial plans, right? You want that stuff organized. Okay. Then you have, of course, your personal correspondence. So this is going to be your personal letters, um, important emails printed and saved digitally, right? And journals or diaries. All right. Now I got tons of diaries. I'm definitely, y'all need to just go ahead and burn those when I die. <laughs> I probably talked about some of you don't. <laughs> So, so it's like, I don't know if y'all want to go reading that. Okay. All right. Cause that's where I go vent. So now we're going to look at the home base business documents, right? So, um, the, you got business structure and, re um, uh, registration. All right. This is important. Uh, business registration and licenses, um, articles of incorporation or, or articles of organization, right? We have the partnership agreements. Now this will actually, now you can do this as a copy, but this will actually be in your business kit. All right. This would be in your, what we call our corporate papers, right? You're going to put that in there. So it's going to have the members. It's going to have a whole lot of your, your, um, your meeting notes, all those different things will be outlined in your corporate kit. All right. Um, financial records. All right. So this is going to be your business bank statements, expense receipts and invoices, payroll records. Um, I have ADP. Uh, I encourage a lot of you all to get it. If you um, get it, I got, um, I got someone to hook you up really good. Her name is Bailey. Um, uh, Cicely, I know Cicely does ADP as well. We had, um, what was her name? What was her name? That is it, her. It, it, they're actually friends. Um, but it's Bailey. Now I have a, I have a new agent, um, with the partnership that I have with them. And 
it is, um, it, you know, you only have to pay yourself maybe once a month, but they do all the record keeping for you. They do all the taxes for you. They do everything for you. And it's just in this hour right now, how they're cracking down on folk. I'm look, I, uh, nah, I, 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 um, nah. What was her name? She, what is, not McKay, is it McKayla? Is it, what is, why do I, I know her name? Hold on. Mackenzie. It was Mackenzie. Mackenzie. That's what. <laughs> um, so yeah, we, you know, we got that. So you want to make sure your payroll records is on point, um, that you're, you're paying your payroll, of course, just out of a payroll account. I've taught you all on this on, um, setting up your business banking, you should have a minimum of five to seven accounts, one of which is going to be your revenue account. Then you're going to have your expense account. Then you're going to have your investment account. Then you're going to have your payroll account. Then you're going to have your tax account. I even have one called petty cash. Okay. Um, I, you want to have these different accounts so that all the money is just not coming out of one account. You want to make sure that money is being dispersed properly so that there's no issues. Macy, that's what it would Macy, not McKenzie, Macy. Yes. She's still there. Macy's there, but she has a promotion. So I'm working with Bailey. So I was on a call with them probably about a month or two ago, and we was working out some things um, with Macy and um, it's Bailey now. So Bailey, if you need correspondence um, for my people, a lot of my people are under ADP like I am. You can go on my website. I have a tab literally says payroll. Um, and you put your information in there and it's it's in there. Um, hook you up. Um. Where are we at? Contracts and agreement. So these are going to be your service contracts, client agreements, supplier contracts, leasing agreements, um, if it's applicable, right? Because you may have a brick and mortar. Uh, then you have employee and human resources, right? Employment contracts, employee handbooks, training manuals, employee uh, tax and payroll records. The good thing about that is I have all that with ADP. They keep all that for me. Okay. I've, I always put people on, unless I'm doing like a one-time outsource type of thing, I still, I still will run a payroll and ADP will cut the check for me. Um, I just put in the information and they cut the check. So it's, it's really good with tracking. Okay. It's really good with tracking. CPAs don't like to deal with this kind of stuff. I get it. Mm, you know, so ADP deals, deals with it for me. Then you have intellectual property and this is going to be your trademarks, your copyrights, your patents, um, anything that is, you have licenses to use it. You want to print that out, especially for some of you all that are using licensed work at times. Um, you want to, there are, when everything is online, they will update something and then act like, Oh no, that wasn't it. No, I have a hard copy. I have the hard copy. They, this is why every time you log, you notice you're logging to a website every other day. It's like, hey, do you accept these terms and agreements? Hey, do you accept this? Do, do, do. You know why they're doing that? Because they done did some hokey pokey. They're changing info and they're legal. I get it. Their legal team is always changing stuff on, on the website, right? On the user agreement information. They're incorporating AI. They're studying your data. This is why this is imperative that you understand this, right? And that you print out this stuff at the time of conception. OK, and people can retract emails. So this is why you want at the time of in, at the time of inception, you want to print out those things. So, of course, you have your insurance documents, you have miscellaneous documents. Right. Um, you know, like your marketing material and plans. Now, what I haven't even went over everything. How many of you are in your home and your home based business, even if you just have a side hustle or whatever? How many of you all have these things in order? How many of you all are being accountable and being stewards? How many of you all are the prime minister of your home, gentlemen? Okay, let me tell you something, men and even women. But I want to talk to my men for a minute because I'm always talking to the ladies. You know, when you find a, a, a wife in, in, this, in this day, you know, if you find a wife, you find a good thing. But that's assuming that you know how to pick them. If you are meticulous like this, I don't care how banging she is. If she 36, 24, 36, right? I don't care. I don't care if she thick in the thighs, okay? And got them beautiful eyes. It don't matter. When a person, when you get on this level of stewardship and self-governance and self-management, I don't care how sexy they come, okay? How good a man look. When you are on your stuff like this, one thing that is very unattractive and ugly of a person is a person who don't have their life in order on this level. Now, this that might be an extreme statement, 
Okay. But it's the truth. Do we, let me ask you this. Would you want you or you? Do you want to meet somebody that's unorganized? Do you want to meet someone that lives sort of like it's a clean version of a hoarder? Do you want to live with someone or be with somebody or even be in business someone who tends to mismanage? Do you want that? And is that, and, and, and would you tell me that's a, that's a wise decision? Now we mess up. Trust me, we, we, we mess up, but you should be able to get on track very quickly. Okay. So you have to understand and be a lot of times we're asking for people to show up and be the very thing that we aren't because we're too lazy to do it. We're too lazy. Okay. So when we get on this level, I'm going to tell you, you might become a little bit elitist in some of your thinking and your ways, because what happens is I have someone in my family, their home is chaotic. And they're always asking, why you don't come by your house? Why don't you stop? I do not want to be in that. I don't like how it make me feel. I don't like the anxiety. I don't like it. It's clean, but it's cluttered. It's clean, but it's too much going on. It's clean, but it's overstimulating. It's clean, but I got to sit in, in, in a little space to even sit down. I can't do it. I can't do it. And when someone who has done the work themselves and have to constantly do the work themselves, especially if you ADHD or neurodivergent, you know what I'm talking about. It is hard to sometimes until you get in a rhythm to do, to, to be in order. But once you do it, some people say it's sort of neurotic. They say you kind of, yo, you know, they, I'd rather people, I would rather people talk about me being too much of a stickler and over discipline than the, than the latter. Okay. Then the latter. And this is coming from a person who dealt with those issues. And so I, this is literally has been my prayer, right? And God has been teaching me this over the years, but it's hard. There was a time in my business. I can't tell you oh, this, and this is uh, shameful, but I can't tell you times when I've missed out y'all. You wouldn't believe me if I told you I've missed out on hundreds of thousands, maybe even millions of dollars. Why? Because I'm not organized and I was cluttery. In my own home, just I'm talking about on the home side and in the business side. And that is real. And it, 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 it makes you feel sick in the pit of your stomach. Things that I couldn't even... I wasn't able to do or participate in what, and it was all due to my own lack of organization and not able to get out of my own funk and the feeling of anxiety and overwhelmness. Cause it's a catch 22, right? It's a catch 22, right? Um, you know, you need to clean the kitchen. You know, you need to empty the dishwasher. You know, you need to get things out of the hallway. Okay. I had a bad habit of when my walkway, I've always had beautiful long walkways and it would just, it, it will be cluttery. And one thing the Holy Spirit showed me, he says, your walkway is a reflection of your mind. The minute you come in your house, it is, this is forecasting exactly what your mind is. Okay. Your bedroom, if your bedroom is disarray and is, and is dirty and what have you and all these different things, it is a foreshadow of what's going on internally. And a lot of us have a lot of PTSD and traumas and stuff. I ain't even getting into that. And it becomes reflective in our home. So what happens? I'll give you an example. One thing that happened with me, right? So I need to clean the refrigerator. I need to empty the dishwasher. The pots that I want to use are dirty in the sink. But I also went in because I got overstimulated at the supermarket. I bought all this food. Now I got to put all this food in either a dirty refrigerator or I got to clean it. Now I want to cook the food, but I got to empty the dishwasher and wash these dirty dishes just to be able to. You see what I'm saying? You see that that cycle? Y'all, there was times in my life 
that would happen and I can't no talk excuse how I say this but I'd be like oh hell no nah. I'd be done had to leave the food on the counter go 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 right back out get some. it was better and easier for me to just go out I wanted to cook I wanted to have a nice meal I wanted everything but it was so overwhelming because I didn't have nothing in order that I had to go outside and go buy something to eat because the time it would have taken me to do all the other work it was it was like uh uh-uh. uh it's gonna have to be one or the other we have to be ready to pull ourselves out on the carpet and be honest with ourselves and come and just confront these areas of our lives. Okay. So that <laughs> look, uh, Kiana says, that's why I'm finding myself in a nesting pit. Come man. And with it being springtime. Oh, come on. Cause no way today I had somebody <laughs> I could, I go today and somebody see all that. Let me, a lot of you are like you, you probably want a spouse or you probably want to entertain at the home and you want people to come over, but you won't even have that. You can't even do that because you're not organized. You're not structured. Um, you, there, there's a lack of cleanliness, right? Yeah. And like I said, you're a clean hoarder, but it's just, it's just, everything's in disarray. And no, you don't, it's just, it's overwhelming. We need to come back to overwhelming. And I have been working on a system to help people do this. Okay. And I've been, and one thing I'm going to tell you all what I did for, and I've been doing even, let me tell you, how about this? I would have people on staff. Now I'm really telling myself, I had people on staff. I was paying, didn't even need to pay all because I was in, in, it ended up costing me money having people on staff because I'm now overwhelmed because I got to manage these people. I got to do this. I got to do that. I have to get them. It was too much. And God, remember, remember when I told you all, um, the Holy Spirit showed me, this was like around last summer going into fall. And he gave me that whole message on sitting down titles. And the one title he gave me, he says, you are a manager. Y'all, that was really hard for me to accept. And the funny thing is I majored in business administration. <laughs> that was one of my majors, right? Business management and business administration. And I'm certified in management through the state of Georgia. So I the problem with me though, I am good at starting, but as um, one of the apostles, I love um, Apostle Ivory Hopkin. He he says, I have a finisher's anointing. And I started praying that. And every time I meet with him, because I meet with him regularly, I'm all, I say, Apostle, this is what I, this is my prayer. This is what I want. I want to have a finisher's anointing. It's not going to happen overnight, you all. Okay. It's not going to happen overnight, but this is why I like having a, have done list as opposed to a to-do list. A to-do list is going to, you already, you're defeated at the dough. Because one thing we do when, especially us that are creatives and we like doing stuff, we like to be productive. But when we have a problem with putting 40 things on a list, we can't put five things on it and we can't put 40 things on it. So I've learned to do, to do a have done list. And what happens is I go to bed so happy. I go to bed so re- I feel rewarded and I'm not filled with the guilt of going to sleep, not having finished a list that I dang sure couldn't even have completed if I wanted to. Okay. So be sure to join into um, the class on Sunday with the asset armor class. We're going to go more into this. This is something where Tiffany specializes in as far as with the asset protection. And she, one thing she's adamant about because everyone's online talking about, Oh, I'm going to get a trust and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do, 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 and whoop, do, whoop. And she's like, ma'am, sir, y'all people be online talking about all this stuff and they don't even have the basics. They don't have the fundamentals down. So they go out here getting things and they get the wrong thing. But you you think you okay. You think you're secure, but you're not. Okay? Trust me, I've wasted a lot of money. There was times because I just could, I was so overwhelmed, I would just pay people. I didn't have to pay people. I didn't have to pay them. I didn't have to. But I'm spending thousands of dollars with people on staff and all. And, and, and what was even worse, they couldn't do what they needed to do at their best because I wasn't showing up enough, not even for myself. How could I show up for them? So what are some tips on decluttering and organizing? All right. For instance, we spring cleaning now. 
We spring cleaning. Number one, we're going to take inventory, right? We're going to start by listing all the documents we have, categorizing them and listing them above. I bought me, it was a, like 40 some dollars. I got me this label maker. When I finish labeling everything, y'all, I'm so, I'm on it. I, this spring, I said, I am taking this to a whole nother level, okay? So we spring cleaning. G digitize, right? Where possible, create digital copies of important documents for easy access and backup. Y'all, I've been buying terabytes like crazy. Terabytes, okay? Ain't no one gig, two gig here. Uh, 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 uh. I'm putting files, full files, fireproof ones. And guess what? They go into the they go into my fireproof box. Why? Because I want these files. Yeah, we have hard copies. Hard copies can burn up. Hard copies can get water damaged. Hard copies can go missing. But if I have the flash drive, that's a key. So you want to digitize where you can. Um, everything in the cloud. It, um, I think I told you all this before. Me and Tiffany was talking about it. One thing I was talking to this guy that specialized in this uh, in this um, in the tech space, and he frightened me. And one of the most dangerous places in the world right now is the cloud. We do not realize how susceptible we are in the cloud. All of our information, photos are in the cloud. I'm done with a lot of this cloud stuff. I'm done with the cloud storage. I'm canceling my clouds. I have two iPhones for different accounts. I'm canceling it because our stuff is just out here in mystery land. And it's just, it's just for the taking. I'm over it. I'm done. All right. I even bought two um, photo boxes because I'm going back to printing my own photos and having photos. OK, we did it for thousands of years. We've only been doing this whole digitized thing for, I don't know, a good decade. All right. Then we have sec secure sto storage. OK, of course, the solutions like the knockbox uh, for sensitive documents, ensuring both physical and digital protection. All right. We want to make sure it's fireproof. Regular review. Make it a habit to review and declutter your documents periodically, ensuring everything is up to date and unnecessary papers are discarded securely. So let me tell you something like a, um, one of the things that I do. So one of the things I do right now, I have this rule where like I organize on receipts every day. I ain't going to do it. All right. I, I get tons of receipts for my business, for my you know, purchases I do at my home. Me, when I go out, if I'm making business purchases, it, I'm playing, they, I'm playing shuffle cards with my credit cards because each card is for a specific purchase. Right. Um, you gotta, you, you gotta be in compliance. You gotta manage it. You don't want to be commingling money. And so it's hard doing that every day, but here's the thing. I could take one day out of the month, the same day or in that within that week, and I have a box. All, all my receipts go in this one box. They go in this one box. When I have a day when I want to play some jazz, it's a nice rainy day, light some incense, you right? Put on some Boney James. Tiffany called me yesterday and um, because I got my new loud CD player. And um, I said, girl, the first thing I played was some Boney. And she said, you better not say no James. <laughs> y'all don't know about that y'all don't know about no bony james but i was going to put on some you know you want to put on some jazz or whatever and i dug up all my old cds and it was so nostalgic right and i can sit there and i can organize eat have some mushroom coffee that's my thing right now you have some mushroom coffee and and just sit with your thoughts oh then we have accessibility. Ensure that the key documents, especially those related to the estate planning and emergency information are accessible to those who might need them in your absence. OK, so um, she will go over that kind of um, that kind of information in Sunday's class, which will really help you all out. Because if you're in a coma, how do anyone know where this stuff is? How do how do people know where to find this stuff? Right. Um, it may be months before people find these documents. So you want to make sure you have these things set um, that will really uh, help your next of kin if need be. Okay. Um, then we have categorized strategically, uh, you know, um, establish a retention schedule, right? Know how long to keep each type of document. For example, your tax returns are generally recommended to be kept for seven years. They only go back usually about seven years while other documents might be kept indefinitely. Okay. Um, use color coding. I'm really big on this, right? You want to implement a kind of, um, color coding system for your folders or files, making it easy, um, easier. Uh, to quickly identify documents, categorize, or prioritize. And now, mind you, I'm telling you all this, but y'all, you still want to get your CPA. You still want to get you a CFP, right? You still want these people that are accountable. Pa go ahead and pay these people. You know, get you a trust attorney, right? You're only going to see them a handful of times, but you want someone to call. You want to be able to access this. I tell people, you should have a business coach. 
if you are if you are serious, you should have a business coach on retainer. All right. One of the things I got some of my people in here, I was um, I was going to do this thing called adult study hall. And the adult study hall was basically was going to have people that uh, of a certain caliber, though, would come in. I would do these adult study halls. Um, it would be a fee every month. And I would put on these study halls every week or every two weeks. I'll do these study halls. And basically, it'd be an open way where people are, we're working, we're going over our business practices. It'd be like an eight hour block. And basically, and we've, I've done this with some of my people, y'all. And they'll tell you, they in here right No, Janae, no. <laughs> she said, she's the main one. Um, but <laughs> the adult, I know the adult study hall was really dope. And basically, we, when we're, it's funny in our classes, and any of you all have been in some of my last um, live classes, or even when we do the after hour class, we'll do what we call the after party. We'll do the after party classes, or sometimes I'll just have a long class and people are free to leave if they want. What people are able to execute and do when we're working collectively together is amazing. Like people will be doing stuff while we're actually, you know, they're like, okay, because they they like it's like being in study hall, it's like being in a classroom. It's kind of like that motivation. And uh, uh, you know, some people instead of having to pay a business coach, you know, um, to talk to them for ninety minutes. We could sit there and we could banter. Y'all know I go into your stuff like, okay, let's run it. Let's run the play, right? I'm being funny right there. Let's run the play. Let's go ahead and see. Okay, poop, poop, poop. Let's work these numbers. This is what you do, especially with ChatGPT. I'm able to execute and they're able to execute. So it's good to have qualified vetted individuals around you um where it's not just a take 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 but we're giving and we're we're serving others as well in the community okay where we at oh we're right at one hour so oh i had so much more for you all um some tips on that emergency preparedness we're gonna get more into emergency preparedness um sicily that's the video i posted of sicily envision lives um uh, her video was people like special needs, right? That's this, the space that she's in. She has a whole contingency planning a plan on people. I think she's selling it for like five bucks, right? And she gives you a free console. It's amazing people. Now she specializes in New York, but she can help people in other States as well. But having someone to talk to, like, wait a minute, I didn't even know this was accessible. We need to have emergency preparedness y'all. Everything that's about to go, go on. Um, look, I, I truly believe life favors the prepared. Okay. It favors the prepared. Um, look at everyone wants the adult study hall. <laughs> I'm like, girl. And I, and the funny thing is I was thinking, I'm thinking about even though I'll be on sabbatical. I was like, if I was going to do it and, and run a, a test run of it, it will be, um, during that my sabbatical time. So that'd be what May, June, July, and August. Sure enough. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna get to that, but I've been so busy. Yeah. I would be the facilitator of the adult study hall. Yep. Ba -ba -ba. All right. Well, I'm gonna let, I'm gonna go on that note. Y'all remember, um, go ahead. Let me go over here. Uh, be sure to join in. Oh, before we go, I think some of you all seen the post, but we have the coloring book class. I'm gonna help you all with the coloring book class. So we're doing that on this Thursday. So, um, the last day to register is 10, well, but technically tomorrow, technically tomorrow, um, the last day to register for the color me black. So that's, I'm um, going to be creating coloring books and creating digital art and doing physical or, um, selling digital coloring books. We're not doing KDP. This is all direct seller. Okay. Um, and I'll just, I'll kind of lay out the roadmap for you all, but we're going to focus on creating the art, organizing the art, um, structuring it, structuring the contents of your, of your product. And that's that. But, um, don't forget up here, we have the asset armor class. Okay. Uh, that's on Sunday. So you definitely want to go on and get into that. I don't y'all, please. I'm telling you right now, y'all do this. Every time I do a high profile class like this, you will hit me up the day of, or the night prior. Once that thing is down, it is down. I cannot afford to allow this is there's too much that went into this one way too much. I can't do it. You just have to wait for the replay. Okay. 
You'll just have to wait for the replay. <clears throat> um, da, da, da. Oh, I don't be doing much on TikTok these days. I've been really, I've been real quiet. <laughs> Everyone, I'm thinking about probably doing some videos on TikTok, but I've just been kind of, I've been kind of, I guess I overall fasting from certain platforms overall. <clears throat> Thank you, Spiritual New Growth. All right, you all. So be sure to join in on that. I can't wait to see you all this Thursday. We're gonna have the coloring book class, coloring color me black, and then of course I have the upcoming um, um, black girl prompt 2.0 class that's coming up. That's gonna be dope. Okay, we're doing that in Mid Journey. Um, the coloring book class we will be using Mid Journey as well as Dolly Three. Okay, so that will help you all out. I think you all will be very amazed at what you all can do with these products. Um, you know, I've been doing my coloring um coloring books and i've been doing my bookmarks and i have a whole nother company um uh color of codes um that i'm doing with that it's a subsidiary to ceo drive her um i'm trying to decide if i'm still going to put it under my publishing company or if i want it to stay under ceo drive her right now it's just a it's just another branded um division of ceo drive her so there we go um i hope you all take what you will Take what you will with this today's talk. Um, I hope you, you know, take advantage of the whole new springtime. Springtime and fine, right? We're going to sit here. We're going to get everything right. We're going to clean out our junk. We're going to structure our documents. We are going to be on point. We are going to be the prime ministers, the elders, the governing bodies in our homes as God wish us to be, right? But please seek his advice and his attention. I'm not attention, but um, his... um his advice and uh, his wisdom, you know, by way of the Holy Spirit and to um, and read, read up on those that were good at this um, in the Bible for inspiration. OK, so. Uh, yeah, that's that. So love you all. Y'all be blessed and I will see you all tomorrow, tomorrow. OK, we'll do another. I'm doing seven days of these talks. OK, so I will see you all on tomorrow's podcast. Y'all take care. Be blessed. Bye bye.